If you're an indigenous person who's that is going to read this book, prepare to feel extremely validated. <laughs> Hello everyone. Okay, take two. Hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel for another video this week. I know I've been a little bit sparse with my uploads, but I have been creating videos. I just haven't been super pleased or happy with the topic or outcome, and I just don't feel like the videos were good to publish but hopefully this one will stick and i will be posting this one this book review is finally going to be about this book called there there by tommy orange and i've been delaying posting this because my dad has actually been reading this book so i've been waiting till he's finished so i could get the physical copy back you know so i could take nice pictures and have it for you in the video for me when i talk about it but anyways, my dad finished this and he finished it really, really quickly, which I think is a good testament to how this review is going to go and, you know, what my opinions on this book are. So I want this first half of this video to be just kind of overall thoughts, non-spoiler thoughts. So I'm not going to spoil anything about the book. And then halfway through, I will put you know, big text and let you know that will be the spoiler version of the video where I'm going to be kind of spoiling it and, you know, giving away stuff about the book. So first of all, I wanted to give you some context as to how I happened upon this book. Um, I was in Alaska. If you didn't see, I have an Alaska vlog um, that I will link Oh, it should be over here actually, that I'll put a card in up there. So I was in Alaska and I read a book that I bought called The Tao of Raven. And I'm going to be doing a book review for that book as well. But I was really on this kick of like, I want to read books by indigenous authors, uh, fiction books to be specific, because it dawned on me that I have not read a lot of books or any for that matter, before I read The Tao of Raven that had to do with Indian characters that were written by an Indian. And so I enjoyed reading The Tao of Raven so much because I felt represented. If you didn't know, I am indigenous. I'm a California native. And, and I don't mean California native as in I grew up here. Yes, I was born and raised here. But a California native, as in I am an indigenous person of California, okay? Just wanted to clarify that because some people say that and it annoys the shit out of me. Anyways, I felt really represented reading these books and I decided I would go <laughs> on um, an adventure of reading more indigenous authors. So this was my second book that I picked up that was about indigenous people by an indigenous author. I said, we're going to get into overall thoughts, non-spoilers. So let me just preface this so I can define my entire review. I absolutely adored this book. I loved it so, so much. In fact, I would say it became my new favorite book. And before that, my favorite book was, um, if we're talking about fiction, by the way, was Good Kings, Bad Kings. Adored this book so much. Um, I would give it a 10 out of 10. Just to give you an idea about what the book is about, obviously you can go online and like read the summary or whatever on the back. But I'll put it into my words for you. It follows 12, I believe, different characters. Um, almost all of them who are um, Cheyenne Arapaho native people. And they all have like unique stories, but they are all going to the same powwow in Oakland, California. And I would say that this book is specifically trying to capture the urban native experience. By the way, I might be using a lot of language in this book that you might not understand given that it's kind of specific to the indigenous community, but I will try my best to limit that. If you don't know what I mean by urban native, um, it's a term specifically for indigenous people that have grown up in urban cities or suburbans, usually not on their traditional homelands or um, 
specifically not on reservations. So one thing to clarify too is that not every tribe has a reservation. If we're talking about United States indigenous people, so for some people that is the only experience they have but there's also like rural areas and stuff like that too but the urban experience usually has to do with like big cities like san francisco oakland for example los angeles new york city and i feel like this book did a really great job at communicating that experience so some of the characters um are very young and that was my favorite thing about this book is that you rarely read or hear or learn about native people's experience from the youth perspective. So I would say like 18 to like 26, 27 or whatever. And this follows a lot of characters who are like very young adults, early young adults or like mid adults. But then there's also some characters that are more like in their 40s or 50s. Um, but I don't think it really, uh, there's like necessarily any elders in this book. So I thought that was really, really awesome to focus specifically on youth and it made it so relatable. And I'd also have to say like, if you're an indigenous person who's that is going to read this book, prepared to feel extremely validated. And it made me realize like how specific and like, well, that's not the word specific um just like the jargon and the experiences that we have are so shared because they t use like a lot of words and references where i was like oh yeah you would really only get that if you were an indigenous person you know okay sorry the lighting decided to switch up on me the sun went down when i wasn't planning on it why can't the sun just like follow my schedule you know <laughs> anyways Jackie Redfeather is recently sober, and I really enjoyed her story. It was really tragic and sad, but I think it was really raw and very unfortunately relevant to our community, the struggles that she's going through. I won't give it away. The other thing that I really loved about this is that it was such casual writing that it was extremely relatable. There was often a lot of times that the author, like, cussed and use swear and explicit language and you know just as a young person that's super realistic and just kind of the way that I talk you know when I'm if I'm just like talking to myself or my friends that was you know the casual language it was just so easily readable and just a turn pager for sure I finished this book pretty fast I really wanted to finish it I was super excited not in comparison to the book that I'm reading now which I'm realizing I must not be enjoying that much because it's taking me forever to finish it but like I said I really enjoyed this book so that's all I will say for the non-spoiler version right here we are going to get into the spoiler version of, of the review so i'm going to specifically talk about characters and kind of their endings and just like some of my thoughts on them the other characters in here um was oh, i can't remember his name i'm gonna look it up really quick there's actually like um a little cast of characters at the very beginning which i really like that helps you kind of go back and look there was a character named edwin in here and he's like kind of addicted to being on the internet and one of his um things was that he's also extremely overweight obese let's just call it what it is fat i have to say i didn't really like his story because i thought it followed a lot of the same narratives that people write for fat characters and it didn't feel like anything different so that was kind of annoying that would be my one downside of this book one of my other favorite characters was Dene Oxendine who um was like a young documentary filmmaker who was trying to make um a documentary basically um at the powwow and at the end he gets shot and it's so 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 sad and i'm like really really i was so upset about it another character that was um actually very shocking to me and she came so much later in the book but her name is blue and she's the daughter of jackie 
who she had when she was really young and it was the product of sexual assault um specifically rape and so she gave her away and um blue like her story follows where she's like in an abusive relationship and she like runs away from him and she ends up meeting her biological mom and dad at the powwow that was a really interesting character because i'm adopted myself so she was adopted out still native you know and she like wasn't really connected with her culture and i just thought that was super different it's it's not the same as my story but I appreciate hearing other perspectives of adoptees. And basically at the end, they try to rob the powwow and um, a lot of them end up dying and, or getting shot and like seriously injured. And it was so tragic. And I was talking to my dad about the book today and right at the end, like normally throughout the book, you would read some of the characters and they'd go on for like, 15 pages or something like that 20 pages maybe at most and like suddenly everybody's perspective was like two pages three pages one page and so it went really fast and my dad was like it ended so fast and I don't think he liked how it ended really quickly but I was like yeah I know it just ended so fast oh another thing about this book I think that kind of has to do with spoilers as well is that there is um a part um between part one and part two where he interrupts the author tommy orange interrupts to i don't know what he called it it was basically like an interlude where he where he talks specifically like to native people um and to settlers like kind of describing the native experience and there was a really amazing quotation from it we are enrolled members of tribes and disenrolled members, ineligible members and tribal council members. We are full blood, half breed, quadroon, eighth, sixteenth, thirty seconds, undoable math, insignificant remainders. And I really appreciated that kind of acknowledgement of, you know, how colonialism has affected our requirements for what it means to be indigenous. Like really includes every type of indigenous person um in this section and he like even before that he talks more about like the variety of indigenous people um but that was one of my favorite lines from this interlude and kind of the entire book i just felt very seen and validated at that part if you would like to know more about my book reviews so that you can go out and buy the book and anticipate my review i will link right here in a card i posted a video talking about all of the books that i'm going to be reading for the month of july and august but it seems like it's probably going to go into september as well so make sure you check out that video um i also talk about some of the documentaries that i'm going to be watching so if you are new to this channel make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can get notified well not notified that's a notification button but so you can get in your inbox my videos when i post another video maybe you could hit that bell button if you want to get the notifications i don't know i don't know your life your decisions you know i'm, I'm not gonna intrigue uh, I'm not going to intrude and tell you what you should do, but you should definitely subscribe. And also make sure to give it a big thumbs up for this video because it helps us smaller content creators. And leave a comment down below letting me know what you thought of this book, if you read it, if you're going to read it now that, you know, I gave you a review. Um, what was your favorite part? And um, what other books are you reading? You know, just leave whatever comment you want to, okay? Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in my next video.